This is Rob Tubbett for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted to be joined. It's been a while, actually, since I've been joined by the bounty hunter himself, Michael Hunter. How you doing, sir? There he goes. What's going on? I feel good. You look good. Thank you. Thank you. So, what have you been up to? Last time I saw you was Saudi Arabia. That feels like another lifetime ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, time flies when... um. You know, you have the COVID. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, I've just been chilling, getting in shape, training, um, you know, doing my real due diligence, not, you know, using those, uh, you know, those performance enhancement drugs to get myself in tip-top shape in, in a matter of uh, months. You know, I've just been, you know, on the slow grind. So, at the minute in the heavyweight division, let's get straight to it. There's, there's two big fights, well... There's two main event fighters, should we say, and Dillian White and Tyson Fury, who we're still waiting on opponents for, Mike. Let's start with Dillian White and Alexander Povetkin. Obviously, Alexander Povetkin today had to withdraw from that fight for coronavirus. Pitch it to me. Why should Michael Hunter take that fight? Why should you be the man who steps in to face Dillian White? Is that a real question? I guarantee because I'm the only man that would do it right on a day's notice with, with for free. There he goes again. We're going to fight for free, for free. It's a very easy, um, you know, they can't say anything about the money or anything like that. It has to do with something else. So I've already, you know, took care of the business part. So, uh, you know, I think I'm just, you know, uh, the best person. Uh, you, as you see, every time that there's a fight that falls out, uh, my, ma my name is mentioned and I'm the only one that is, I, I, I. So uh, I think uh, I'm just that alone, just me, you know, participating and willing to participate at any price at any time. Um, you know, it, it just says a lot, you know, it's just let me, let me, let me win. You feel me? <laughs> now, let's talk about that, Mike. We've heard you say that recently, that you'll fight for free. Now, there's millions of dollars that can be made in these heavyweight fights, but you're saying that you'll fight for free. You'll understand that fans will find that a little bit difficult to believe. Tell us why. Well, you know, um, cause it's not about the money, you know, it's more about the glory. The money will come, you know, I would give all my money to charity, you know, uh, you know, it's, this is not, you know, a lot of these guys see that's the problem with the industry right now is everybody is, um, to make a move. It has to be, the money is in the forefront, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a, the guy that, that, you know, really money, money is a byproduct of my passion. So. Uh, you know, it just comes, you know what I'm saying? I, money is not something I really have to stress or think about, uh, you know, when I do what I love. Now, obviously, the Dillian White fight is opened up uh, today in very, very kind of unexpected fashion. Uh, which fight would you prefer to have at this point? Would you prefer the Dillian White fight or the Tyson Fury fight? I feel like I'm the best fighter there is out there. So uh, Either one of those fights is just going to give me an opportunity to showcase my skills. I, like I said, I always, I only only go up up against myself. It's me and me again in that ring. So that's why I'm so uh, willing uh, to fight anybody because, you know, I competed against myself time and time and time and time and time again. So uh, you know, it's just it's it's not, it's another move for me. You know what I'm saying? I, I enjoy. I enjoy what we're doing, what, what, what I have going on. I feel a little, you know, disrespected in, in some in some ways uh, as far as, you know, uh, just where I'm at and, you know, people, the guys that know who I, you know, where I stand um, and them not saying my name or, you know, belittling me. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's all fun and games. We can't complain about nothing. We, we're here, you know, this is just, this is life right here, you know, so this is what we're here for. You mentioned people saying your name. I found it quite ironic that Eddie Hearn was mentioning your name as a potential opponent for Tyson Fury. He didn't seem that keen on making you a last-minute replacement for Anthony Joshua when Josh, when um, Jarrell Miller fell out. Uh, did that bring a smile to your face, Michael? Uh, I mean, like I said, it's like these are the cards in the hands, you know, we're dealt with. And, um, you know, you have to find the enjoyment out of all these little situations, out of, you know you know, uh, in the dirt, you know, if you will. So, uh, you know, I think, like you said, uh, I think it's flattering. You know, I think that they're, uh, I think it's flattering that they're calling, you know, they called me the boogeyman and uh, he admitted and owned up to, you know, that they couldn't get me no fights and it was hard for them to, you know, 
haggle. You know, they had to do a, you know, two fight deal with the Kuzman and, you know, Pavekian situation. Um, so I think it's very flattering. Um, but you know, uh, you know, flattering that doesn't get me, you know, doesn't get me to the glory, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I, I'm just here to win, you know what I'm saying? So I think it, it's all, it's all good. Um, but, uh, I would, I would respect it more and I would appreciate it more if, you know, he just threw some bones my way. You feel me? Threw some of them, throw some of them, the fresh meat over here, you know? Have you reached out to Eddie at all today since the Dillian White news? Uh, nah, nah. Even, you know, we could do a – I could fight everybody on their whole card. I mean, you know, from, you know, Bacoli, the Dillian White, you know, we'll, we'll leave Anthony out of this out of the picture. He got, you know, his own stuff going. But Dillian White's uh, – I don't know. He got another fighter he got going on. And anybody else uh, that's, you know, on that side of the bo- – uh, across the water. Uh, anytime that there's a fight come out, I put my name out, but really, I, I feel like I shouldn't even have to now. You, you should know that I'm I'm open and willing. You know what I'm saying? I'm an open book right here. So, uh, like I said, I think it's flattering, but, uh, you know, we're still on a mission, so. Do you find it frustrating when people, like, one of the things that's leveled at you is that you're not a big enough name. You're not well-known enough. That's one of the things that people say to you. Do you find that ironic considering the fact you boxed as the co-feature or the co-main event to the highest-selling pay-per-view in British boxing history? Yeah, uh, a little bit. But, you know, also, you know, it's really the fans that are saying that, like, Dillian White wasn't even boxing when I started boxing, you know? When I was in the world championships and going around the world and fighting and competing and um, you know, matching my skills with, with these guys, Dillian White was not around. Um, you know, Anthony Joshua was, was, you know, barely around, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I just think that these guys, they, they've been knowing who I was since, I, since the amateurs and they've known me in the pros, you know, um, that's why I feel like I've had the hardest time uh, when it comes to that, because the fighters do not say my name, uh, you know, uh, they get, they get weary just even my, when my name comes up. Every time, if you look at any interview, anytime my name comes up, they all, they, they don't say, oh, but, but, I mean, I did, I did hear, I gotta give Tyson Fury credit because I did hear him uh, give me some credit uh, one time. So shout out to him. But, uh, you know, they still, you know, still avoidance. You know what I'm saying? It's, that's, that, that's that flattery thing again. You know, they rather flatter me than fight me. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's the name of the game. I'm, I'm here to play it. Now, some people who'll be watching this, this won't be news to them, but you, you box Tyson Fury as an amateur. Now, give us your version of how that fight went. Put it this way. We are supposed to fight twice. I came to uh, England to fight Tyson Fury twice. There was only two. Uh, there was only one heavyweight in uh on each uh, team, there was a there's an A and a B team on both sides. Um, all those guys, Carl Frampton and you know Billy Joe Sanders, all those guys was there too. Um, uh, and uh, you know I I did what I had to do. It was a I was basically the main the the last fight, the main event. It was a heavyweight. Uh, he was very well known. Uh, we we fought. We were supposed to fight again, and he never showed up to the weigh-ins. You know what I'm saying? It was a clear stoppage from in my in my vision. I know in my heart when I say when I when I check off, I I, I already have that one checkmate. I already have that one in the books. So, um, you know, it's just only a matter of time if 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 he ever does, uh, you know, end up wanting to have some courage and fight. You know, of the best, you know what I'm saying, instead of kind of piggybacking and, you know, uh, nitpicking, uh, you know, picking around the industry, um, you know, if he really sits down and really thinks about it, he knows that I got one over on him. And um, he got one over on me because they gave him a W and he didn't fight me again the next day, you know. So that was his way out. But I seen it. And one of the guys, I don't know who he is, uh, what was his name, but shout out to him too. He was a one a 141 pounder. Uh, in that in that uh, duel, he was from uh, England's side, and he pulled me off to the side, man, and he told me uh, what it was. So, uh, and I'll never forget that. So, uh, you know, uh, that's kind of like the story. Uh, that is the story, and I'm sticking to it. And uh, you know, uh, it, you know, it, it was a long time ago. 
uh, we've both progressed since then. You know, he's gotten, you know, much better. Uh, he's went through ups and downs and, you know, he's had experience and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, and, and so have I. So uh, it, it, not to say that I'm going to just steamroll him. You know, he is who he is. He has a name. But, uh, you know, I'm definitely a problem for sure. I mentioned at the start of the interview, the last time we, I saw you in the ring was against uh, Alexander Povetkin in Saudi Arabia. Uh, a lot of people, myself included, felt that you were, were harshly treated in that fight, felt that you should have won that fight. Were you surprised with how Alexander Povetkin dealt with Dillian White? Did that shock you? Why not? I, 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 predict, I predicted it. I, I was surprised that Dillian White was doing so well uh, in those last rounds. Um, I mean, not surprised, but... You know, like, I, I was surprised that he knocked him down twice. Uh, you know, I, I thought that. But, you know, Povetkin is crafty. He's going to get his hits off. If you look at all his career, you know, his career, he makes sure he gets here, he lands. You know, he makes sure he gets his. And, um, you know, I was able to take it. You know, Anthony, Anthony Joshua was able to take it. You know, these guys were able to take it, you know. And um, Dillian White, you know, he didn't, you know, really show that. He has another chance. Well, you know, he had another chance that kind of got shot down. I, I think that's a that really sucks for uh for somebody like Dillian. When it, when it comes on the outside, I think it's uh where people like uh fans are like, oh, I think it's you know it's kind of good. But uh, for somebody that's the fighter, and I see that Dillian White has uh you know a, a true fight in nature. Um, that you know he wanted to get that that back you know right away you know it's like you know he slapped the ground you know said check up you know do run that back you know which I respect that so um, I kind of I think you know I think it sucks for him not to not me for him not to get that rematch back when it was already set up um, you know you know I I think I deserved the rematch before him but you know I'm not here to you know complain about any of that. Moving on, Michael, this past weekend in the UK, we saw somebody who you know very well, Alexander Usyk, fight Derek Chisora in his second fight at heavyweight. Did you watch the fight? And if so, what did you make of it? No, I didn't watch the fight. Um, I kind of uh, you know, knew that was, kind of all knew that was what was going to happen. I don't think it was a secret or it was any, you know, surprises. You know, obviously they were in the ring and there's two men fighting, so you know, there's puncher's chance, but that's, uh, you know, that's kind of all there was. But uh, I heard, you know, um, Chizora did good. And, um, you know, Usyk is, uh, you know, he's progressing. And, um, you know, he's a world-class athlete, a uh, world-class fighter. And um, hopefully we see him soon down the line as well. I feel like, uh, you know, he's, he's on his mission. And, um, uh, you know, he's trying to, you know, stop uh, the whole – Anthony Joshua's uh, Tyson Fury uh, situation, if I'm not mistaken, mm. uh, which you know I think uh, is all gravy. It's all good. It's all it's all boxing. So um, you know, more power to him. How much are you wanting that rematch? Obviously, he's the only man to defeat you as a professional, Alexander Usyk. Uh, do you feel like I'm assuming that you feel it'll be a completely different story up at heavyweight? How much do you want that rematch? Um, well, that's the only fight I actually want if that makes sense. If I had to, to desire any fight, uh, you know, it would be, it would be Usyk. Um, so, I mean, I guess that, that tells you, uh, other than that, other, other than that, I, like you said, I'll fight anywhere, anytime, but with anybody, I just, it's more of a, you know, it's more of a fun thing. Um, yeah. So I, I feel like eventually me and Usyk will, will get back and, and get back in the, um, you know, on the dance floor and, tap dance away a little bit, you know, um, in the near future. But, uh, you know, it's a time for everything. So I'm just enjoying the moment right now where I'm at. It took me uh, quite some time to get where I'm at, um, considering my circumstances. Uh, you know, I feel like I should have been uh, progressed a lot further. You know, I'm two-time Olympian heavyweight, uh, American, you know, represented the United States twice. So, uh, you know, I feel like uh, – I feel like I should be a little bit further in my career. Uh, you know, like you said, people are just kind of getting to know me uh, as far as the out the fans and stuff like that. But, you know, it's just all uh, circumstance. And uh, I'm like I said, I'm enjoying it. I recognize it. Uh, I'm aware of it. So, uh, you know, I can't be mad. I'm, I'm doing my best I can every day. And um, that's all I could ask for. 
What's your promoter situation at the minute, Michael? Mm. Uh, well, right now we have, we have, we're, I'm an open book. I don't have no manager, no promoter. Um, um, well, you know, yeah, pretty much that's it. I'm, I'm working on it, kind of setting the foundation up, got some good, good stuff in, in, in the pipeline. Uh, you know, the whole COVID and the, um, you know, me being released and all that, um, obviously wasn't a plan, but I'm, well, actually me being released kind of was, was kind of planned in a sense, but not desired if, if that makes sense. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, we're just still working, just working on it, trying to get a fight as soon as possible. And, uh, you know, start letting people know that I'm, I'm still here. I'm not going nowhere. So, uh, you know, my dad's been around, my brother's around, my, my uncle, you know, you know, this is a family situation. You feel me? So uh, I'm a franchise player here. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going nowhere and I'm going to be here. So, uh, you know, you guys are going to have problems with me every heavy weight. Even the young boys coming up, put them on the line now. I'll get rid of them now, right now. So. Okay, Mike, before I let you go, so people, people, go, go, go. I was going to say, people, 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 you know, like, like me, I'm the type of guy that I fight somebody that's lower than me, you know, that think, they think they, they think they can beat me, put them up, put the money up, put, put, put it up. Let's make it happen. You feel me? I feel like I'm the best in the world. You know what I'm saying? Bar none. You feel me? So, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's what it is. There's some fire out of you today, Michael. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before I let you go, Mike, somebody else you know very well, Deontay Wilder. Now, he's had an interesting few days. Um, I know you would have seen the video that's been going around. What do you make of it? You know Deontay, of course, from the amateurs. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, you know, me and Deontay, is, we're, we're, we're cool. Um, we're not real, real super close. But in the amateurs, we basically lived together for, for the year, for a year and some change. And um He's a good dude. Uh, you know, I know that he really means well. Um, I think that uh, there's a lot of, you know, when we have so much money and team and all this stuff, there's a lot of, um, you know, ego and a lot of things get pushed into saying things that, you know, uh, you might not want to say or you have to say, or I don't even know exactly what the situation is, or even convinced to say, you know, um, maybe, but I, I really think that, he shouldn't have went that route. I didn't really even exactly hear what he said. I didn't hear the interview, but to bring another excuse and to say Mark Breland uh, tainted his water is, is uh, I feel like it's a, it goes against his first argument. You know, if, if, if Tyson Fury was cheating and it was on Tyson Fury's side, however he may have been cheating, um, the only man to see any of that or have some innate, uh, intuitive nature about it was Mark Breland who saved him uh, from getting his head beat in if that was the case, right? So I think he just kind of killed his argument and his um, kind of um, tampered his, um, his, his, uh, his, his situation there, you know? And then, you know, you know, he waited until, you know, I don't know the clause until they moved on, um, you know, he waited so long to be silent. Uh, I mean, to, you know, speak up. So I just think it's a kind of a very sticky sort situation and he kind of, uh, didn't really put himself in the right position to uh, have the right argument, even if he, even if he is right, you know, I, I just think he did it the, went the wrong way about it. You know, uh, maybe uh, he'll have some other evidence or some, something else to convince us, but I just think it was kind of a, a kind of a weak move for him to do that. Okay, Michael. Well, as always, it's a real pleasure catching up with you. I can't believe it's nearly been a year since the last time we spoke. Um, but funny old life and funny old sport that boxing is. Um, thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social. Before I let you go, let's touch on it again. You're willing to fight Dillian White or Tyson Fury or both for free. For free. Just for the viewership. Just so the fans can say, that's a bad mama jamma right there <laughs> you feel me for free call me you guys tyson fury dylan white eddie hearn you know my number you know get reach out you know what i'm saying for free it's an easy it's an easy business move for you guys you know what i'm saying it's absolutely free nothing i'll fight for nothing
He'll fight for nothing. It's the bounty hunter, Michael Hunter, right. with some fire straight to Boxing Social. Thanks very much, Michael. I'll catch I up appreciate with you. appreciate it. Thank you. I miss my workout. I'm going to go work out. So that's where the fire is coming from. So y'all have a good one. Enjoy. Cheers, Mike. One love.